Hi guys, today we're going to take one of the images we shot of some lionesses feeding on an elephant that we got up at Ruha National Park in Tanzania. And we're going to take it from this image, which is what we shot, and get it looking something like this. The lions at Ruha have become known as the elephant killers of Africa through the success they've had hunting elephants in the park. We were fortunate enough to come across a sighting and start photographing just as a small herd of elephants walked into this. They were restless, they were unhappy, they didn't much enjoy it. And at one time we thought they were going to chase off the lions and perhaps even charge us. But they didn't. They milled around for a while and then moved off into the bush. So let's dive in and see what we're going to do with this image. Right, here we are in Adobe Lightroom and we're working in the develop module, which is this one up here at the top. And we're going to begin our work in the detail palette. The first thing I'm going to do to this picture is add some noise reduction right down here at the bottom. And not a, not a huge amount, about 10 should do it, uh, which would be pretty good for a picture like this. And sharpening I'm going to leave as the default setting, but drag the masking up to about 50. Now there are more um, scientific ways of deciding on this, this number, or more accurate ways of deciding on this number, but in a picture like this it's not as easy to do. So we'll tackle that one in a future video where we can get the amount of masking absolutely spot on. To lens corrections I'm going to enable profile corrections and remove chromatic aberration. Those settings I apply to pretty much all our images. It's when we get into the basic panel that we target those settings to each individual image. So let's head up there. They call it the basic palette because this is where you do your basic adjustments to your image. And the first thing I'm going to do is click auto here on the right hand side. Now mostly Lightroom gets this pretty accurate. Invariably there's some tweaks we need to make but it's a good starting point. You can, you can do it all manually and if that's what you want to do, but I find this way gets us into the ballpark and we can take it from there. I find the image just a little bit too bright at this stage and it'll become clearer just now, but I'm going to make it perhaps a little bit darker than I would like to. Now, you'll notice if you've got your exposure warnings, that's on the top right hand side of the, the histogram, there's a little triangle up there. If that's turned on, you will notice here on this exposed bone um, that we have some clipping happening. The pixels are cut off onto a brightness level. And all that means is that at that point, we're going to have a complete white blob of pixels. There's no detail in them. There's no tonal range in them or anything like that. And that's why I shot the picture darker than would have been the correct exposure. Because we can lift the shadow areas very nicely, very easily. Uh, in post in Lightroom, but once you've burnt out your highlights, they're gone. And so we can easily fix that now by dragging your white slider to the left. The whites on the left hand side here, drag the slider to the left until that exposure warning on the bone goes away and the little icon light goes out up here. You can see if we turn the black clipping on or the dark clipping on, you can see the clipping in here in blue below the elephant's trunk in the lioness's mouth and nostril that we're clipping some of the black areas. Now that's not as bad as clipping the whites because we've got detail in those areas. There's information in there. Whereas you've burned out your highlights, there's none. The black areas, the dark areas, there's still some information there. And to a degree, we can lift those. So let's do exactly that. Um, we go to our blacks and we're going to slide that to the right. Just lift those to a degree. I'm going to leave some clipping there because it just adds to the drama of the image, the contrast, the punchiness of the image. And as long as there's not too much in the way of clipping, it looks just great. Now we've got our image starting to come to where I want it. I'm going to put in a little bit of post crop vignetting that darkens it and you, I'm going to turn off those exposure warnings. So we've darkened the, the corners of the image or we can brighten them. Now 
we're going to dial in probably about a minus 10. Now our next step is we're going to do a little bit of cropping here because I find the foreground here is a little bit messy. When I shot the picture, I just wanted to include a little bit of that, the muzzle of that lioness that's standing up, which meant I got a little bit of this messy foreground in here. I'm just going to crop that out a little bit like that and click once again onto our cropping tool there. So now we've got a little bit of post crop vignetting in there. It's starting to look good. What I want to happen in this image is that when you look at it, your attention automatically goes to that lioness's snarling face. And the way we do this is that your eye naturally goes to the bright areas of the image. So what I'm going to do is just brighten her face a little bit so it stands out from the rest of the image. And we do this by clicking on the radial tool just underneath the histogram here and drawing a circle around the lioness's face. We then take our exposure slider and drag it to the right. Not too much because we don't want it to, it must look natural. What you don't want to happen is some, somebody viewing this image says, oh, they've used the radial tool to increase the exposure on the lioness's face. Rather, you want them to say, wow, look at, the, look at that lioness snarling. So just a little bit of, of exposure on her. And I'm going to just push up the texture a little bit to about 15. Maybe that's too much down to about 12, 13. And the clarity up probably to about yeah, six or seven should do it. There we go. Click that icon to get rid of that. And now what I'm going to do is go to the brush tool, which is this rather odd looking icon just below the histogram here. Click on that and I'm going to push up the exposure now. Yeah, two or three stops. Doesn't matter. Hold down your space bar and click in her mouth. And now what we're going to do is we're going to paint an exposure increase onto these teeth of hers. Now, we just using this amount of, of exposure increase to see where it is that we're painting. For heaven's sake, we're not going to do anything like this in the final image, but painting on here, because it's so high, we can see where we're painting. You don't have to be terribly accurate in this instance because we're not going to be doing huge adjustments here. It's just a little bit of an increase in exposure on those teeth to make them a little bit more prominent. There we go. We paint in on all these, these teeth. Shame the poor old computer is lagging a little bit. There we go. That should do it. I'm going to double click the word exposure here on the left hand side and that takes it back down to zero. Hold spacebar, click in mouth and now what we can do is lift those teeth just a little bit. And when I say a little bit that's up 0.3 of a stop which maybe even a bit much. I'm going to come down to about, there we go, just a little bit. Otherwise again people start to say wow look at what he's done. Um, and you don't want that. People must enjoy the picture, but not realize what you've done to it. Having done that, I'm now going to click on New here at the top right hand side of the palette. Hold spacebar and click in her mouth again. And what I'm going to do now is just increase the brush size a little bit. And I'm going to paint in more exposure here onto her tongue. Again, we need to be a little bit careful, not obsessively so, but just let's get this. There we go. Just this tongue painted in. Now, you see what's happened here is that I've gone outside of the tongue and onto the teeth a little bit, and that's easily fixed. Right. So what I'm going to do is down the bottom here, underneath this palette, is an erase tool. And I'm going to just 
come in here. You'll notice that the icon has got a negative in the, in the, in the center of it. And I'm just going to erase over these teeth. There we go. And this one too, where we just went over them. Like that. Back to the A tool here on, below the, the palette again, at the bottom of the palette. And I'm now going to double click exposure again. And there we go. Hold space bar, click in the mouth, and it takes it out, zooms out. And we just lift that exposure again, just ever so slightly up again to about a quarter of a stop. And that just lifts the detail in that mouth ever so slightly so your attention goes to it. Click the brush tool again to get rid of the, uh, the adjustment brush. And there we go. That's about where I would leave it. Obviously, you could keep going with this for hours and hours and hours. But at some point, you've got to call it a day and decide that's what you like. Um, hope you've enjoyed our chat and the little um, exercise here in Adobe Lightroom. And we'll see you on the next video. Have a good one. Cheers.